Hello and welcome back to another event preview with me, King T, and my recurring guest, Yumi. Uh, yeah, we're right in the thick of the player off-season, I guess, the summer break. And it's getting really boring. Uh, Yumi, how have you been keeping busy? Um, I've been I've been doing podcasts. I've been playing a lot of games. You know, like this is my one time where I can feel like I can justify a break because all the players are taking a break as well. So like, I'm not maybe researching or watching as many CS games. Like maybe an occasional We Play Academy game that's on. But yeah. I feel like this season the standard hasn't been quite as competitive as previous seasons because I mean there's there's a lot of circumstances surrounding that league and and what what it wants to be versus what it can be right now. So yeah, I've just been I've been enjoying some a little bit of uh, respite as well. You know, just playing I don't know V Rising or uh, getting in some matchmaking games as well of CS. Like just something a bit more casual. Yeah, fair enough. Getting that rank back as well after the most recent reset. It didn't do anything. It's the same. Not? Like okay. yeah, and I went from global to global. Like it wasn't really a shock. Just uh, yeah, that, I mean just that's just how, that's just how it is, man. <laughs> All right, well fair enough. I haven't bothered yet. Um. I barely play Counter Strike anymore, you know. Because you spend so much time watching it, it's just it doesn't have the same appeal. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it can be hard as well to like separate how serious you wanna be about it. Like if you've got that competitive drive and you like you wanna win all the time, but then also are you trying to go pro? Probably not. Not anymore. A bit late for that, yeah. Yeah. Already peaked in terms of what I could be, I think, biologically. So yeah, we're not getting anywhere yeah. close. Alright, let's recap Cologne. It was the last big event. Uh, we made some picks, made some predictions. Uh, hopefully there's a graphic on screen that the producer will put forth uh, that explains exactly what happened. But basically the play-in, I scored two from two. My Dark Horse of Zero Zero Nation did make it further than anyone believed they could. And then my favorite, Vitality, showed up, did what they had to do. It was all good. The other side of things, Yumi, uh, you got your favorite right. I think Heroic was a pretty clear favorite in that context. The play-in, they were pretty cert certified. Sprout though, not quite pulling through for you. Yeah, well, I had a complete misread on how the how first and second round games would go because I I thought it like I thought the the system was a little silly, and well, ESL are smarter than I am, so they didn't do it that silly way. They actually like sort of randomize after the first round, and so I thought Sprout would have like easier games going forward, and then they just ended up with not easy games. So um, mm. yeah, I, I thought they might have been one of those surprises, but when I looked at the the rejigging and and how which games they'd end up in the second round, yeah, they never really stood a chance, did they? So, oh no, they didn't. It was it was unfortunate that Sprout is a team that, especially now with their new rebuild, where they seem to be going towards a full Danish roster, mm -hmm. almost. Like I think the only, in terms of the rumors I've heard and what's been confirmed, the only player left to be swapped out for a Dane is uh, Lon Lon Lonx, Lonx or Lonx, yeah, who is rumored to be the Sphinx replacement if that series of moves ever comes through. It's looking more and more doubtful by the day, some reports, but yeah, well, then again, we've got a new no report idea. today that it actually might happen. Masuta allegedly going to join Falcons. So, wow. who knows? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's not, nothing's fully confirmed. We can't really understand what's happening there because it's uh, not been completely reported on. But yeah, moving on to the actual main event. I didn't do great. Um, went 0 for 2. Cloud9 didn't make top 4. And NIP just didn't quite have the uh, the firepower, the flair, the spark that I thought they would have to be able to upset a few people. And then your, your picks actually a little more solid. I think would be fair to say. Yeah, I, I thought they were. I thought they were all right. I mean, outsiders. I don't know. I, I like. I always want to kind of believe in in the idea of outsiders, but then I, sometimes I still watch their games. I'm just like, I just. I wish that their philosophy would change a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and, well, Navi was always, in my opinion, going to be a safe pick. Uh, that that core, just... It's it's strong, man. It's it's really, really good. So, I mean, yeah. I don't think there's anything you can sort of knock past them. They really punished me for getting a bit edgy there with the Cloud9 pick. Like, phase were available. And I still looked them in the eye and went... I'm yeah, it's a bit. It, was, it felt a bit boring to pick Phase, though, didn't it? And like they also yeah. came off like a pretty rough performance before this. Like what uh, at Blast, I didn't do so, too well, if I'm not uh, if I'm remembering correctly. You know, it wasn't um, brilliant at Blast. It was it was disappointing. Yeah, it's like same with them and Ents. It was just yeah, mm. it felt like they were capitulating a little bit. But 
then they go and win something else. So, I mean, you know, fair play. Brought it all back and has an incredible final, I Am Cologne. I think, oh, yeah. best of fives wise, it's the only one I've sat through start to finish without ever taking a map off because I was bored. Um, it also had the most insane game five. Like, oh, what an yeah. absolutely really amazing game. A truly a perfect way to end a season, if we say that was our season ending, you know, we have a big summer break. A perfect way to end it. Uh, crowned the champions of that time period, you know, January to July. They really, really put their name on it, you know. On the major, yeah. one, three other big events, three other or two other, doesn't matter either way. Huge, I think it's three. But yeah, FaZe Clan, absolutely impressive. And now we have to see if everyone else can try to catch them again. Because, uh, you know, the, the conversation at the end of last year, can anyone catch Navi and you know, make the right changes? FaZe did. Literally no one else was able to really come into the same ballpark. Like, even with Navi taking that, you know, massive downturn, no one else was able to climb up to the top and really be there except FaZe. Like, it's been kind of a tale of failed roster moves so far this year yeah it sucks because i mean we looked at ends and we thought okay there there might be something there but maybe they they need to to make a change and it feels like that change is is coming but maybe not in the way that they were hoping um yeah. like they're gonna uh, the rumors are they're gonna lose one of the star players they're replacing their op but now it might be too late um and then that whole g2 project it like they were trending up like they felt like they were doing kind of better as time went on. I know I know they, what, play second at Katowice, and people were kind of excited about that. Like, oh, it's looking pretty good. But then yeah. every event afterwards, it got worse somehow. But then steady climb back up, it felt like. Um, and now they're just... Well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but now the rumors are that they're just going to scrap certain parts of, uh, of that roster in favor of, of new additions. Yeah, we're going to talk about those changes because, of course, they do come up in our predictions that we're going to make. Because yes, the focus of this actual video would be the Blast Fall groups, which are another brilliant format that's intuitive and easy to follow. When you first look at three groups and elimination bracket, then a second chance, you're like, ah, screw it. Let's just. I kept it simple with the uh, the rules on this one. It's like, yeah, these any of these top six, top eight teams could be favourites. This bottom half, except a couple who just shouldn't be there. They'll be dark horses. Because so many of the teams make it through. I think six teams maybe make it out of this uh, of this stage. So there's pretty decent chances, even if you're a kind of middling side, that you'll be able to upset one team and make it far enough. So we'll start with our first, our top picks, as it were, our number one favorites. I've taken FaZe, and you've taken Na'Vi. Yeah, I mean, it feels a bit boring when we've laid it really out like does, that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, what was the last grand final and how good was that? Yeah, no, let's stick with, with FaZe and FaZe and Navi. Do you want to make your case first or do you want, want me to start with mine? Uh, you, you go ahead. I need to really prepare this detailed, uh, elaborate argument as to why FaZe are a good team. Well, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but the core of players here for Navi is just, it's just too damn good. Like, I, I'm almost certain that regardless of who they went to, like, uh, I think we were kind of talking ahead of uh, come, going on live that SDY is going to be playing at this event but even even then I think they would have been looking to see if there were any other players that they could pick up because SDY is kind of on the older side of, of Ukrainian players like you think about maybe even someone like I don't know Head Trick that's in their uh, academy roster but he's orping now when he used to be a rifler when he was actually looking pretty good as a rifler so now he's uh, now he's orping and that's what Simple does um, mm. and you have like Lollipop 2k who's like a free agent that's belarusian but yeah. you know he has been on russian speaking rosters before so i'm sure it wouldn't be that bad a fit but then you can well, better russian like, speak russian so that's just not yeah an well issue. <laughs> but then you consider as well like the geopolitics of belarus allowing russian troops yeah. to that'd be the bigger issue off. i think for a navi move would be well exactly because uh, they've they've been pretty adamant that they don't want to pay people that are going to be paying taxes to the russian government and you know i guess enemies of the, the Ukrainian movement. So it's kind, they're kind of in a weird pigeonhole scenario where there's really, like, even if they wanted to go with somebody outside of SDY, like, I'm happy with SDY, to be quite honest. Like, I think he's yeah. suitable. He made some mistakes that were even highlighted on the broadcast by Simple, saying, like, oh, well, I mean, SDY forgot some stuff. But the longer they work with him, the better that's going to get. It's just in terms of, like, a long term plan, Navi will want to target certain people. And God, you imagine being those Akuma guys that were just shady as hell last year. Like, there are some pretty solid players on... Uh, there were some pretty solid players on that roster. It's just like... Really, yeah. 
did they have too much information? Maybe. So uh, yeah, they just that's... never pick up those guys anymore. <laughs> so If we imagine that not everyone on that team is cheating, well, let's just assume no one on that team was cheating. There was no real confirmation. It was just, hey, these guys are sus. Don't invite them to your events. That was yeah. kind of the ESIC ruling. The Orpa, what's his name? Is it Psycho? Uh, Sensei. Sensei, that's the one that's the Orpa. He's consistently built, he's that player from tier two who every time you're like just looking through HLTV stats or something, he's just there. Just constantly yeah. there. And you're like, no matter who he's playing for, who's playing with, who's playing against, he'll give you a 1.2 rating over and over again. And you're like, at some point, someone has to give him a shot. It's just a shame that his entire reputation is tarnished by the fact that he's on these teams. And, yet, and also continues to play with the players who are primarily implicated. They yeah. keep going back to each other. And I'm like, you, do you want these rumors to literally, like, follow you around like a bad yeah, smell? Yeah, it's like, like oh, we all hold the same secret, so we got <sighs> each other's backs. <laughs> like... It's, it does just come across very shady. It really does. No, I don't think... Actually, when the SDY signing happens, you know, the, the initial trial, I had a couple reservations. And as they've watched them play, like, yeah, there's moments where you're like, he needs more time in the system. The system's not the most simple thing to understand. Yeah, simple, maybe calling him out on broadcast. It's a simple thing to do, I think. I wouldn't really recommend that from players. Mm -hmm. But again, it just shows, give it time. He should fit in like a glove. Like, they were able to win an event with him. They're able to play elite Counter Strike with him, and he's honestly an upgrade in every way except he's non IGL to Boomich. So I, I just I don't see there being a better option. Also, his age is twenty five. Like, unless you're signing teenagers, he's not exactly I mean, deep in it. He's about the same. I age mean, as I think that is the trend though. Like, we're sort of aiming at sort of like maybe early twenties. That in in terms of like building a a future roster, like how many years do you give SDY before he's you know, past his his point of being able to perform, you know. Well, how old's um, Rain? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, you raise a fair point, but yeah. you know, age is just a number, but it is typically tied to performance. That does not hold up so. in court. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, he's he should be fine. I think you get if you wanted him to be a starring player, like a full on like the bit, the simples that trunks of the team. Yeah, now would not be the he would not be the player to sign. Yeah, but in terms of filling a role and being just a cog in the greater machine that allows those three big names to really frag out, I think he's, he's brilliant. And we've seen through those like really revealing HLTV articles that have been coming out, how much of a star perfecto is for his role. Like, you know, the support star plays the hardest spots, yet has some of the highest ratings for those spots. Clearly indicative of how well the other pieces work. He just has to slot in and be fine, and the team should be able to continue to build on that success, because it really is... Oh, it's so front heavy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like it's it's just it's indicative as well. Like they've had limited time to run with SDY, and they've been able to, you know, contest Phase, who I think by all accounts are probably one of the more complete looking roster. I mean, the most complete looking roster currently in the scene. So, if all they need is somebody like a warm body that is able to to sort of follow follow protocols and occasionally kill people, like. SDY is a good candidate because he will go above just killing people occasionally most mm. of the time. Um, but yeah, I think just in terms of like long term plans, I I'm a little worried for what this this says about Navi because I don't even know if that they have somebody they can target that's like viable for this roster given the their ethos of how they want to bring people in. Yeah, there might be some issues if they have to like bring in a new rifler, make more changes if players decide to move on in their careers or in their lives. Or randomly take breaks, like Simple Intimated he might. Mm -hmm. Now there was, there's always some crazy ideas of buying back Munazi, uh, you know, Simple moving on to rifling, things like that. But again, we're talking, I think we're talking far too long term to really have any idea yeah, what's going to happen. Yeah. Because we've seen in the space of about eight months, G2 go through three IGLs. <laughs> Who are we to say what's going to happen in 18 months' time? We can't really know. We can't really know which of these Academy players turns out to be the next god. There's so many of them, they keep churning them out because they're really dedicated to it. They might find another perfecto, they might find another bit. So I'm not going to think too much about the future stuff. I'm just going to focus on the now and the now, at least from here until 12 months' time. I think SDY is fine, unless he shows otherwise. Yeah, but basically I've picked Na'Vi because I think they're a very safe bet to make it to the playoffs. <laughs> Effectively, like... They're, they're probably like, Ugh. yeah, they're, they're the safest pick for me in terms of just like, yeah, they're gonna make through make through the playoffs. Like whether or not they're gonna win the final is really up for contest, just because I I don't know that this is where they want this roster to be currently as a five, and if they meet phase in a grand final again, I think they're they're going to find 
those those cracks reemerge effectively. But right. No, I mean it's fine to have doubts. Like we have, they've clearly not been the best team in the same dominant way. But yeah, at this point of the the process, when we're talking last four groups, they should be a solid pick. As are the team I I've picked up. Phase because well they won the last big event they won't alone and sure if you're a very pessimistic person thinking there's a player break maybe they haven't been playing there's best of ones like all around here there's a chance an off chance they don't come in revving at quite 100 percent i think that's one of the problems you had with phase when they you know between the major and their next big event win are they kind of stuttered a bit at points you're like maybe they're not revving at that same level you know mm -hmm. really meshing really playing Maybe they have some problems with like self-motivating in some ways, but realistically, you can't analyze based on your worst nightmares. Like that'd be one hell of a nightmare situation if they don't make it out of this. They should be comfortably getting out into the top six. I think it is get through. Um, yeah, Phase Clan, excellent team. Uh, they've really changed a lot of people's perspectives on how they consider player roles in terms of stars, supports, all that other stuff because you can't. 100% point finger on who plays exactly just supportive roles, just starring roles, to the point where I've seen people get so confused, they've called twist a support. And it's just like, it's not, it's clearly not true, but I get why the confusion arises. And yeah, I think it's, an, it's a masterclass of roster construction to the point where the ROP signing happened and already everyone knew that they would be, they'd be brilliant. Um, it should continue to work. It's been proven to work. I think case closed, unless you've got any controversial thoughts or... It's quite opinions. funny because uh, like I, I was critical of of Rops like ahead of the phase move. I wasn't like really? I'm not I'm not the I'm not 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 that I didn't like that he was joining phase. I think that 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 move made made a, a, like a lot of sense. But as soon as Carrigan left Mouse, it felt like he was just like his impact suddenly wasn't quite there. His conviction in terms of like how they were approaching executes wasn't quite there. And even on phase, like his performance in terms of like his individual like his his individual firepower has been a little bit on the lackluster side but it hasn't been like as as necessary like we we we've kind of talked about uh phase previously and just been like oh well they're bringing in five star players like somebody has to take the knee you know somebody has to bow down a little bit because there's only so much space and so many kills you can get on the map and so like rops is going to be in situations like that as well his role usually thrives the best when there are hiccups in executes like if you're a lurking player you want to catch rotates as they're happening or if your teammates have like broken contact and they've not traded well that's usually where you're kind yep. of expected to have that elevation and so if things actually go to plan then naturally things will decline for a lurker in some respects so i think it's just funny that people are sort of like oh well rops isn't actually playing to his height when like theoretically this is his height that is exactly yeah. where you want him to be because the rest of the team is doing exactly what they should be as well yeah the fact that his looks tend to be pretty safe he tends to not go overly looking for you know plays when they're not there he doesn't try to do too much it's a part of what makes him able to fit into a team like it's a scalable skill to just not do stupid stuff you can play alongside other stars so they can take that space take the stardom and then yeah when shit is the fan all of a sudden yeah. you've got him rolling out of apps and maybe taking a few heads. So his individual statistics haven't been that important. And I agree. At the end of Mouse, honestly, I was having arguments with people about he shouldn't even be considered for the top 20 that year because he was playing that low impact on Mouse Sports at times. But no, FaZe Clan, the roles made sense. Team makes sense. And yeah, since signing him, they've looked ex excellent. He's also hard lurking less on FaZe than he did on Mouse, which is just like... Were they giving him too much respect? Like, I feel like Carrigan has evolved Rops another level as well when he transitioned back into this phase roster because Rops is his little protege, right? Like, he, yeah. he worked with him in Mal's when he just came out of FPL. He's He knows exactly who he is as a player. And uh, uh, just the, the fit works, you know, they're, they're each other's left and right hands. Yeah, no, that, that part of it was, I don't think, uh, played up enough. Like everyone's like, mm -hmm. oh, they played together, but no one specified, you know, they played together from the start of Rops' real professional career. Like, it's that much of a connection. It's, it's, it's deeper than just they've played together. And then it's... he was replaced by Dexter, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a... That must have been a shock to the system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll stop talking about these 
quite clearly predictable teams. Let's get a bit more controversial. Uh, let's go on to Dark Horse, because we had to pick a Dark Horse, someone who really wasn't expected to make it through, but who you think maybe has a chance. Now, I think your, your horse is a little lighter than mine, but it's still going to take some convincing, I think. So, OG, thoughts and explanations? Yeah. Um I I really do like how they've restructured this OG team. It felt felt like sometimes the the roster didn't have as much firepower as people were sort of convening. Like there there's some good quality players on that previous OG team. Like Valde, I think is certainly high value, but mainly for his CT sides, I don't think he actually offers that much in terms of how the the attacks go. Um, so when they when they transitioned, they got uh, Fiku and Neofrag. They yep. they immediately added more players that I think are a bit more intuitive to to how T sides operate in terms of not only the their sort of bravados in terms of how fast they pace into bomb sites, but you know they're just great mechanical players as well. So when when you've got flames on one end of the map and Neofrag on the other in terms of like playmaking riflers for your CT sides, and then when you've got sort of a a bursting bomb site execute with those guys that sort of like ahead of the pack, it looks really good. Uh, and I think it, it kind of falls into Nexus kind of calling style if they've just got players that can frag out like this. Now, not only you add that, but you add Dexter into that equation where, you know, Mantu wasn't always a, an opera. I think like some, some people that are no. sort of joining the scene and, you know, Mantu had been an opera from the start of OG. Um, but he wasn't always an AWPer, he was kind of a secondary, made primary, uh, had to learn a lot about how to operate CT sides. Apparently we're getting reports of him being told to play more passive than apparently he even wants to do, which I don't know if it's, that's like just a PR move Possible. or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it, felt, it felt like he was like a really conservative, safe uh, AWPer. And Dexter is that, but in a much more explosive capacity. Like... He might start at a passive angle, but then he'll push your shit in two kills yeah. afterwards. So uh, you, you've got all this all this firepower and, and Nexa, who seemed to operate okay in G2 when he had kind of similar riflers and, and a system around them. Not to mention, I, I just like enjoy watching Neofrag's sort of mid-round decision-making on CT side. So he does come of, out with some, some little gems, doesn't he? Some highlights where you're like, okay. Yeah, it's okay, like Neofrag. I probably wouldn't have, but I'm yeah. you're not me, so <laughs> he's an incredible little player. And yeah, on Sinners, he was doing bits. So when I saw him get transferred over to OG, I was like, a combination of him and then Fiku, who had these other like skills to bring to the table, I was like, it's an interesting move. Not fully convinced because you know you're lacking a bit of that veteran presence, like pretty much, you know, Nexa, and not I don't want to say kids, but. Pretty inexperienced, pretty young, you know, maybe single team players. Like, it's a, that's the hard sell, I think. It was also the it. communication barrier, right? Like, these guys had mainly played in domestic rosters. So then you're yep. playing on an international speaking roster. Like, you have no idea how any of these guys are going to react or whether they're going to be suitable for an environment like that. But, I mean, so far it looks okay. Yeah, yeah, even though literally it's, what, it's Flamesy and Nexa, the two who actually had international team experience, the other three fully, you know, Stuck with their nationalities until yeah. now. Um, yeah, so far so good. We haven't had much to show for though. We haven't seen a whole lot. Mm -hmm. The games but we've I seen, mean... it's been. Have they even won that much? Like, I don't remember them looking bad. I just don't remember them winning anything. It's one of those. Yeah, they... like, ah, oh, nice showing, but. Yeah, they didn't win anything. Um, but I think they surprised a lot of people with how they performed at Blast, given that they were what I think they played Get Dubai previously. That's why Mantu couldn't even play that event. By the way, I will say the yeah. whole way that they deal with Mantu kind of messed up. Um, yeah. But I think the roster as a whole is stronger for it, which, you know, is even more messed up for me to even say, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think they're, they're, they're yet to find real success. But I mean, if that's what their initial break in period looks like, I think, you know, I'm, I'm very hopeful for what they can offer. Yeah, I mean, taking a map off of Navi beating Ents, and then they actually beat Na'Vi actually in that Blast game, that Blast event, didn't they? They actually beat them in the opening best of three, which shook everyone, and it was actually quite revealing the way they did it, but maybe, you know, it shook maybe a few cracks, some, some intention to detail on Na'Vi's side, um, I think at that event, especially early on, but Ochi's a fascinating one. I think yeah. they could definitely make it through, but it's going to require a, a massive overperformance from not the individuals. We know the individuals have the skills. It's just the team cohesively to outperform what we expect of them. That's the way to put it. 
Yeah. All right. My Dark Horse, I've, of course, There's as always, one. picked something borderline stupid, but <laughs> it worked last time. So, complexity. Now, we all know NA is a massive joke right now. Like, it started off the year everyone trying to be positive, and it slowly got horrifyingly worse. Like, as the year's gone on, everything's fallen apart. And Complexity have finally made the change that everyone thought they needed to make. It's just they haven't made, like, exactly the Rost move maybe anyone would have predicted. They've got rid of Junior, thank the heavens above, and brought in Hulzerk, who maybe has something going on between the ears. Because, oh my... Towards the end, Junior was genuinely one of the most frustrating players to watch in all of Pro Counter-Strike, maybe ever. That, I, I, I don't feel like I'm exaggerating that much. It was genuinely awful. Yeah, considering how much time he'd been with that roster, like, yeah. the, the improvements were staggeringly minimal. So, yeah. I, 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 got, I got an opportunity to talk to, to Fang about it a little bit recently. Um, oh, yeah? Where I was asking about... Because Fang has gone from, like, being kind of like a kind of an entry man to being a bit more lurk style or like lurk oriented especially on on maps like overpass um and he kind of talked about like how trying to make sort of an entry pack work where junior and you know where he used to sort of reflect and, and bounce ideas off of oc you know trying to make that work with with someone like junior just didn't feel like it made a lot of sense or it wasn't working to the same degree and so you know he's having he's had to shift how he plays to sort of make something cohesive to some degree um and so you know not that alongside the fact that junior didn't have you know stand out great performances on his t sides even like ct side might be neglected uh, i think you can have one good side of the map and people will give you a little bit of benefit of the doubt but sure. you didn't have that with junior so um yeah, to, to bring in someone like Holzerk, who felt like a little bit more like a, a system-y type of opera, but uh, occasionally would kind of come up with like flair ideas for for his own game like that. Yeah, I think that's I think it's a cool move and, and complexity on the rifling front actually like pretty solid. So, yeah, they well, they should be. I've been unimpressed by Grim, to be honest, since he joined Liquid, but realistically, since he joined Cole, I was expecting, you know, to see this Grim that every NA analyst has me exists and i've not really been you know surprised i've seen yeah. pretty much the same player and that's been disappointing because yeah everyone loves floppy we know what floppy can provide and fang is for me one of the more underrated players in the scene both in terms of people's opinions and the literal numbers like in terms of some specific analytics i've done he is actually quite impressive like in terms of his impact he should be maybe not elite but he is should be considered far more impactful than he is, let's put it that way. Um, we'll see when we pu if and when we publish those numbers. But yeah, Fang is a player who is genuinely underrated. So overall, the team looks like it has the basis to be competitive at least this level. It's just, I think they have a couple individuals holding them back. And honestly, long term, we might not have the coach IGL combo required to really maintain this level of competitiveness we expect. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that they their philosophy in terms of how they approach rounds can sometimes be a little stale. Like, it, it does feel like the, the same ideas that they were bringing, like, to the table with JT's Cloud9, um, and it hasn't sort of uh, adapted or developed alongside the rest of the scene, you know, whether it's, um, you know, I guess in-game leaders becoming more entry dependent and uh, i think the the burst executes are actually a little bit more prevalent than than what complexity have to offer so yeah i'm i there there needed to be a shift i think everybody understood that complexity had to be making arrangements because if you consider how they created the what the juggernaut before like this is just yeah. not anywhere near where that was um and even that was shambolic with picking up like four lurk players so or at least towards I mean, the end a lot of the the original juggernaut fell down i wouldn't say it wasn't their fault they didn't make as many clear and obvious errors initially mm -hmm. like when they built that first five as we have seen with, with this complexity roster at times like it was just like a hopeful na move it felt yeah like these guys look all right They've been promising at certain events, like they won that fun spark when they were still extra salt, right? Uh, you're like, yeah. Uh, wait, wait, we're losing, we're losing OC. Wait, <laughs> oh. wait, cat, is it too late? 
Mm. Yeah, at that point, you start thinking, wow, we've got to replace NA's only Orpa with an Orpa. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's the thing about the conversation with OC, is that like the same sort of vitriol that we so, sort of heard about Grimm, and that whole dialogue we have about what Grimm had to offer once upon a time, is what people had for OC, but OC's actually been able to sort of transition that very palpably into his game. Like, we, we can, you can see it from the eye test that he has what people have been saying he has from, from the beginning. It's just like some of the inexperience comes out when it comes to timings of peaks and maybe over peaking and things like that. But that all comes with the territory eventually, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, yeah, OC's he's not quite, you know, he's NA's best. Which feels like it should summarize it pretty well, in terms of orping at least. He's still got some, some ways to go, but I don't think he'll ever hit like tier one star orper, like dropping big numbers, carrying big events type level. I just think he'll be fine as long as the team can stack up rifle talent and figure out a system that makes sense. He doesn't need to be superb. I think the idea that you have to have a superstar, borderline superstar caliber orper is a bit overblown. Just but you couldn't make really it good work. Ones. Yeah. Hmm? We do have some really good superstar offers, that's why. We do, so and they've kind of skewed the perspective in that. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you can be Brokey. Yeah, yeah, even, even a little worse than Brokey would be fine. Because yeah. I think Brokey's slightly, he's at, he's, I think he's at a peak of his career borderline at this point. Like, yeah, he has a, but he's had like a couple peak events, and then he's had, you know, a bit more standard events yeah. as well this year. So I, I think, you know, just because he has pop-off performance capabilities, I don't think that really puts him in superstar upper territory for me. No, no. He's far from it. Realistically, he's far from it. Um, but yeah, that's basically my, my idea for Cole, why I pick them, because I've just spent what, like five, ten minutes talking pretty much trash, is just based off this idea that they have the rifle talent, they now have an upper who thinks sometimes, and even without that, they looked almost competitive in some games. Like, they, they played some teams close even yeah. without an author. So this can only make them better. It's best of ones, so expect a little chaos, hence the weird pick. And yeah, maybe this is NA's best chance to make a dent outside of Liquid. But thankfully, that was expected. You know, They took everyone's best players over the course of many years. Um, but back to favorites. And sometimes, and sometimes mess it up as well. So. And also mess it up. But let's get back to favorites before we get lost in the whirling conundrum that is best of NA. one maybes and NA um, <laughs> who have you taken as your second favorite yeah um, so I've gone with G2 and I know what you're thinking first off okay I think most people like JKS pretty happy Nico pretty happy Hunter pretty happy Monacy pretty happy needs more experience but overall probably better than most of the other operas you could get on the free market in terms of like immediately adding and, and like the prospect of him then well if rumors are true um them going to be approaching this event with hooksy um i'm not as so i initially i was very very concerned because i actually don't think hooksy can just last on a tier one roster quite like this um, I don't think individual. I think individually he'll be targeted a lot, and it's going to be very, it's going to be very apparent that the tactics will revolve around that. But I also do think that their their T sides will look better in a in a strange way because I think he was always very good at sort of like making these mid round calls and being a little bit more loose about how he approaches the game. We've had this conversation before about Alexi where. As much as he maybe said he didn't have to micro as much, it could it like it was very apparent that he wanted to do it to to some degree. Like it's just his thing. nature. Yeah, exactly. Like you you don't spend your career being one thing and then immediately transition to the other and you know not have some kind of relapse to some degree. Um. So so yeah, I think I think he's going to be a little bit more in line with like a uh even like a Nexa type caller. Um, but also. I think he might just be a sacrificial lamb a little bit of the time, which is my main concern. But I think with the, the addition of JKS, you know, I think we had Xtaz or Maui made a, a comment on, on Twitter and Xtaz sort of responded saying like Hunter was sort of being underutilized in the previous system because they needed him to lurk where he's typically like a second or third sort of pack player. Yeah. Um, 
and so now you you combine that with JKS being a natural lurker that that does allow for for something exactly like that. You know, you can have Nico, Hunter, and Monacy as your entry pack, and then I, well, I don't know what Hooksy is doing in the meantime. I have no idea how that's well, going to structure. Well, really, your entry but... pack needs to start with Hooksy. It's, it's, yeah, it's, mate, he's that, running that, the entry pathing route. He's you that know, that feels aggro. that okay, but in my in my head canon, that cannot be okay. Um, so well, he's not there to kill anyone. <laughs> He's there to make the guns point at him. Yeah. Like the Carrigan Mac 10 jump around corner type deal. Like that's what we're thinking. We're not talking like straight up taking the banana fight. We're talking in an exec, you need someone to take attention away from your stars. That's Hooksy's yeah, role. Yeah, God. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Hooksy has to be first in. So Hooksy first in, and then Nico Hunter, and then Monacy behind, and then JKS doing whatever the hell he wants to do. Um, yeah, I, I honestly think that they have a decent recipe there just with the four core, like kind of in a similar vein to, to Na'Vi to, to a certain degree. Like I think they've got the right amount of talent in the other four players so that it shouldn't really matter too much. Um, my main worry is, is going to be CT sides because I, in, in the one-to-one -one comparison with SDY and Hooksy, like I think oh. SDY has that every day of the week. So Night and day, yeah. Yeah. Um, for G2, you all is it... No, go on, go it's on. also one of those things where like the the calling isn't going to be affected by player performance on, on a roster like navi where it it will be heavily on on g2 because not only is it a system that's being like will be developed in real time with x taz and hooksy between themselves but in in general like in-game leaders are very much affected by their individual performance and whether or not they find that their their calls are working or whether or not they're they're getting the right sort of impact for their team like that can very much lean you one direction or another if you think that certain bomb sites are weaker, you're getting entries on one side versus the other. So, I yeah, in that regard, like not having a proper flow chart sort of mapped out for this event is a little bit worrying. But so long as I think if they play like a loose game, I think that I I believe this G two roster is strong enough to make playoffs. It's again one of those situations where maybe they drop out in first round of playoffs, but. It's one of those picks that I felt comfortable with because I believe in the four core that they've now got with JKS enough. Yeah, well, here's the thing. When we added a new IG at the start this year, you brought in Alexi B, and then you played clearly not really fully Alexi B style. You played a little looser, a little freer. You, you finished second at Katowice. Brilliant. Yeah. Here you made a new, new move. You brought in this new IGL who, on T side, is known for having a system that allows individuals to go do stuff. To basically go, I'm going to lurk out here at like one at like 50 seconds they'll just say it do it good there's a lot of space for that sort of individual freedom of expression i think they'll be fine they'll, they'll overperform maybe what they'll be in three four months time but as long as right now as far as right now is concerned they should be good enough to make it through uh, that should be comfortable we might see like a big performance from nico you know massive stats again as he likes to do when his team succeed it's usually because he's carrying them has been historically for g matter what IGL you put in there, if Nico's not dropping borderline record numbers, it's not really been working. Mm -hmm. I expect to see that. And yeah, G2 should be fine. You've, you've got a, a really comfortable pick on your hand. Uh, I will say, the talent. it does kind of feel like they're signing Hooksy as an interim in-game leader until maybe after the second major where there's likely to be more player shuffles, so that's kind of my two cents on it. Possible. I, I do rate Hooksy. I, I I get the the issue with him as a fragger. Yeah, it's pretty obvious he's not the greatest of shooters. I just think his system will be good enough to make them yeah. borderline more competitive than they were at times under Alexi B. Just because it'll allow the individuals to play. Uh so yeah. Yeah. G two, uh, comfortable. Maybe in that next shuffle, I don't know who they end up with though. Because if they're not getting Alex now, who when are they getting him? Like you know who they're really aiming at. They're seeing how well this Fnatic roster goes, and then they're picking up Mezzi <laughs> as the in-game leader. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Fnatic's an interesting one. I do, I do want to actually spend some more time talking about that Fnatic for one day, but hmm. let's see how they play. Another first. time. Yeah. So for my pick, Astralis. They're my other favorite pick to go through. So basically, means I'm a, I'm picking the third highest seeded team, like they're the third ranked team in this event. Uh, weird how. We still don't think of them as being particularly good, realistically, yeah. but they keep just not failing. Like, they're not winning anything. They're not playing so catastrophically bad that you think, you know, they're terrible. 
they're somehow, through the power of conflict and blame, still being fine. Like, they're not fallen beyond where you'd expect them to. They're still comfortably in the top five. And yet, there's still so much to improve on this team. So much it's could so, be better. It's so whack to consider that, like, we had this heroic Astralis head-to-head -head where it was like, oh, they're talking so much smack about each other. Yeah. And then at Cologne, heroic place, dead last. In, in in the group stage and then Astralis make playoffs like that is so it's so mental to, to even wrap your head around that because all, all her work have done is change one player Astralis have had to like I mean albeit they haven't changed much since but you know they've been struggling with their orping they've been struggling with even activating like config there's there's problems in Astralis and yet they're yeah. still I guess not as grand as the problems on Heroic, apparently. Somehow, yeah. Uh, Heroic's move is a lot more recent. So, yeah, teething issues, yeah. Yeah, some things to fix. I'm talking about four cores and how strong they are, though, and then... Yeah, you, know. you look at that, that, those players shouldn't be finishing last. Like, just yeah. that roster on paper should not be finishing last. It's not surprising, therefore, that we've heard rumours, heard a lot of talk. Um... In the Danish scene in general, about more movements happening. Surprised we haven't heard more Australis rumors. Um, well, I expected honestly, an I expected an Australis Valder movement. Like they said, they're not making any moves, which to me means they're making a move. Australis, yeah. they're always lying. Like, <laughs> let's be honest. When are they ever honest? I was expecting a Valder move any second, but nothing's come of it. They still got this roster, and you look at this roster's results. You can't really complain that much. You'd like better. You'd like titles. But you consider how everyone outside of the top two has been all over the place to the point where Movistar Riders making playoffs made perfect sense to me. This is, you know, yeah, it's pretty yeah. much what you can hope for when you have no Orpa and two bot player supports. Like, this is good I enough. Feel like, I feel like we've ended up in a cycle because I feel like the conversation around this time last year was like, oh, you know, there's only really one or two top teams that we can even consider. Like, we're talking about Na'Vi really, really heavily ahead of the, the last major um, uh, at the end of 2021. And then now we're kind of just talking about FaZe and Na'Vi again. And it's just like everything else is in a bit of turmoil. So, yeah. Yeah, but you thought about it. Like, the end of last year, G2, everyone hated Nexa, everyone hated Amnek, everyone hated Jax. Basically, yeah. those three were constantly being theorized about who should be cut, where should be just loads of moves are being theorized. They were Everybody still finishing but second. Hunter, it's fun. Yeah, but they're still finishing second at a load of big events. They were just, honestly, at times like this, this far off of being able to compete with Na'Vi directly and beat them. And then you come into this year and it's like, yeah, they've just nosedive off a cliff. Base Clan are another team that are also there with Na'Vi. Even better. So we actually have two real elite teams. Everyone else... What have you been doing? Like, what was the point of all this yeah. nonsense? We went through this whole hoopla just to get nowhere. That's been very, very frustrating. Yeah, they went with fan. G two went with fan favorite moves too because people like Alexi, people like Monacy, and well, you know, yeah. G two hate losing all the time. And yet, making the fans yeah, happy, yeah, made them sad. Oh, what a absolute yeah. Uh someone signed Kassad. Someone, someone get a, a real GM involved. I should make some moves that make sense in the future. Because a lot of these teams have just gone nowhere. Uh, but right, Astralis, somehow, they're going to make it through. It's going to defy logic. Zipex yeah, will shoot the sweet. wall. Barlake will just die, not really doing a whole lot with his AWP. And then somehow Blame F and Config will win the rounds. I don't get how it's going to happen, but it will. They've been finding a way to win 16 enough to still be relevant. And they're going to do it again. It's just sods law at this point. They're all ready. Yeah. My God. That's uh, probably the longest episode yet. It's been 45 minutes. <laughs> Jesus. We, did, we didn't start that on eight, did we? That's where we started like... No, no, the recording is, is 45 minutes. <laughs> um, oh, well, there you go. So let's wrap it up. Um, all righty. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment telling me your thoughts if you've made it this far. Uh, you're basically a god to me. Uh, so, yeah. We'll see who gets this right. There's uh, three points on the line each. Uh, hopefully I can get back in the lead because I felt so happy after the clone play-in. I was up, you know, 
I got both my picks right up to one. I thought I just need to get one of those, one of the next two, and it shat the bed. So yeah, well, let's hope this event goes better. <laughs> and yeah, uh, thanks for joining me again, Yumi. Uh, of course. See you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>